If you've visited my channel before and have seen the many PWM dimming tests I've run on phones, tablets, and other devices, there's a good likelihood you're wondering how to interpret these results. Here's a quick explainer that should help get you the most out of future PWM tests both here on this channel and across the internet at places like ledstrain.org and the many subreddits like PWM Sensitive and Screen Sensitive. The quickest way to see if a device uses PWM is to use a camera with manual shutter speed control. Set your camera to 1 6400 shutter speed or as close as you can get to that number and point it at the device in question. Most devices these days will show gray or black lines, signifying that there's some kind of flicker happening. The general rule of thumb is that you want to see either very few thin light bars or a ton of very thin light bars. The darker or thicker the bars, the harsher the flickering effect will be. You can see the difference in this graph and get a general idea of what to look for. If you're looking for something more accurate though, many people like myself use an Oppo Lightmaster to measure flickering. This inexpensive light meter can be picked up on Amazon for about 50 bucks. Check the link in the description if you want to get your own. This tool can be used to measure flicker on both displays and lights, so you can even see the flicker rate of lights in a public room if you suspect something is bothering you. The Lightmaster creates a set of two graphs for each flicker test. Don't get overwhelmed by this data, it's simpler than you think. The first graph charts a plot point based on the IEEE PAR 1789 standard. Below the graph, you'll find the flicker index, modulation depth, and frequency. While the program uses basic math to create this chart, I don't like it because it doesn't understand the nuance of modern displays and lights. The only things I generally care about on this page are the modulation depth and the frequency. Modulation depth measures how dark the display gets during each of its pulsing cycles. This number is relative to peak brightness, so a brighter display that turns completely off during its cycle is going to have an extremely harsh 99% modulation rate. Most Samsung and Google phones look like this graph, and it's why they have such a bad name in the PWM sensitive community. The frequency is the number of times a display goes through its dimming cycle in a second. While the chart thinks lower is universally worse, that's not necessarily true. Based on research from Pacific Northwest National Laboratories, the worst range for humans is between 240 Hz and 1000 Hz. At 3000 Hz and above, PWM dimming becomes benign to most people, although a select small group of people can still detect flickering at up to 10,000 Hz. Seriously. Back to the graph. Anytime you see a number under 200 Hz, the display is likely using DC dimming of some kind. Normally, DC dimming numbers line up with the display's refresh rate, especially on OLED screens, because the light emitted is directly affected by the refresh rate. That's because OLED pixels emit their own light, and if they have to change anything at all, the light must be refreshed in addition to the color. Some manufacturers, like Motorola, allow users to enable a flicker reduction feature that ensures this change in brightness is as minimal as possible. You can see that dip in the second graph the Lightmaster creates. This is the chart I most commonly reference, as it shows the intensity of the brightness and how deep the brightness dip goes. On the bottom of the chart, you can see the minimum and maximum brightness output measured, followed by the perceived average. On a DC dimmed OLED, you'll see periods of flat lines where the display is fully illuminated during the entire cycle, followed by a dip any time the entire panel does a refresh. Ideally, you want this graph to be as flat as possible to ensure a flicker-free experience. While DC light dimming on OLEDs works for a lot of people who are normally sensitive to PWM flickering, there are still plenty of people who can't use OLEDs at all because of this dip in brightness. A display that uses PWM dimming looks like this graph. It's a constant on and off cycle that shows up normally as a distinct wave pattern. As you might imagine, this constant on and off can be debilitating to some people. Given how bright most modern phone displays are, it's really no different from staring at a strobe bulb. As the display gets dimmer, you can see the cycle change from being partially lit to mostly off. Here, you can see the display typically stays off with very quick on pulses to give the illusion of being dim. 
because I don't like the first graph, I always combine the information from the first page onto the second page, which is what you'll often see on my videos. This lets you quickly understand the wave shape, the brightness intensity, and the frequency. In all of this, it's important to understand that everyone is different, and what works for you may not work for someone else. It's a little bit confusing, but it takes a lot of testing and sort of figuring out your own thing to see what works best for you as an individual. I hope that helps illuminate how flicker detection works and what the graphs in my videos mean. Thank you so much for watching and for your support of this channel as we help educate people about the harmful effects of PWM dimming.